it was first recognized that selenium protected against mercury toxicity. This was back in 1967 when they did an animal study where they found that feeding animals a amount of mercury that would kill them could be completely prevented if they were just given a similar amount of selenium. At that time, researchers only understood that high levels of selenium were toxic to humans. Since then, Scientists have discovered that selenium is a nutrient required for health. Many important processes in the body need selenium to work properly. We know selenium is important for brain development from studies in which the deletion of selenium transport to the brain results in severe neurological developmental problems. In fact, not having enough selenium contributes to many neurological conditions, including mental retardation. But that's not all. Selenium proteins sequester the heavy metals such as mercury, cadmium, and lead and prevent the metals from getting into the cells or, or causing the damage that they would normally cause. There's damage that can occur from the metals reacting with various other compounds. But in addition, one of the consequences of, of heavy metals is that it takes selenium away from where it's needed. Once mercury and selenium bump into each other, they actually form a chemical bond with one another that will not break. Selenium is the essential molecule that the body needs. Mercury binds the selenium, taking it out of place so that it can't perform its essential functions. All of the characteristic signs and symptoms of mercury toxicity line up exactly with what we would expect in an organism with selenium deficiency. Where do we get selenium in our diet? The USDA did a study of selenium sources in the American diet. Out of 1,100 foods that were assayed, they found that 17 of the top 25 sources of selenium in the American diet are ocean fish. The researchers hypothesized that fish containing more selenium than mercury could provide enough selenium to bind with the mercury and still meet the body's needs. Researchers tested this idea in laboratory studies. We gave the selenium in the form of ocean fish. So we had to get rid of any excess omega-3s or vitamin D, so it's only gonna be the protein, which is where the selenium resides. We were still feeding huge amounts of mercury, amounts that would otherwise eventually be lethal to the animals. The animals that we gave fish protein, the selenium from the protein, offset the mercury binding and the animals maintained health, normal growth, no neurofunctional consequences. In contrast, the rats that were not fed ocean fish grew poorly and showed signs of neurological damage within a few weeks. Based on theirs and the findings of other groups, the researchers extrapolated their results to humans. Some people say, oh yes, but an animal model is not the same as a human. However, it's very important for everyone to recognize that all forms of life that have brains have selenium-dependent enzymes that protect their brains. It doesn't matter if you're a human or a rat. If you don't have selenium-dependent enzymes, you are not going to live very long. But what about the studies that suggested harm from mercury from eating normal amounts of seafood? Does the selenium explanation fit the findings of the Faroe Island study? that showed harm from eating seafood? The studies on which the original recommendations are based are studies in which the primary source of, of, of mercury in the diet was from pilot whale, which has very low levels of selenium. They contain far more mercury than selenium. Ocean fish are completely different than that. Most varieties of ocean fish that people consider seafoods contain many times more selenium than mercury. So we're feeling fairly confident now that ocean fish consumption prevents rather than contributes to causing mercury toxicity.